We're approaching graduation season, so today I'm going to show you how to make a wise balloon owl, which is the perfect gift for any student graduating from high school or from university. Hello balloon artists, I'm Melanie from Balloon Artworks here in Derbyshire in the East Midlands. To begin with, you're going to need a yellow 260 and we're going to use this to make a flower as our base. So just inflate that to within you know six or seven fingers or so and then make your preferred flower petal base. So I like to make petals of about four fingers or so so we're just making loops of approximately the same size and we're just going to make that base so if you need any revision on how to make a, a flower you can check out my um, video on how to make a balloon daisy and you'll find the detailed instructions there and it's entirely up to you how many flower petals you make um, you know if you prefer five or if you prefer six and then with this you can just twist off the end and break it off tie let it go and then use that tail and just wrap that tail into that base disappear and you can just rearrange those flower petals okay and there you go so there's your flower petal base. Next, take a six inch quick link. I'm using blush. And I've inflated that with about four strokes of the Qualitex hand pump. And I'm just gonna let a little bit of air out. Give the neck a twist. You don't even need to tie this. Just pull that neck into that flower base and wrap around a few times. If you're at that stage where you're still a little bit nervous about doing that, then you know if you want to tie a knot, then that's your choice. That's entirely up to you. There's nothing wrong with tying the knot. Okay, so that's what we've got at the moment. Next, take a little scrap of 260. I'm using mocha brown. The colour doesn't really matter very much. What we want to do is I'm just tying a couple of knots at the same point on that 260 okay so we're making this cluster of knots here and then i'm just going to trim off either side of that 260. so i've just got the two knots and that is a raisin and take your raisin take a five inch mocha brown and just pop the raisin inside that balloon okay so there it is so next inflate the five inch and we want to put about two strokes of the Qualitex hand pump in and twist that off so that's about three and a half inches in size take the tip of your quick link and tie that directly to that mocha brown five inch and then you can trim off this neck here on the mocha brown okay so take a white five inch round put one stroke of the Qualitex hand pump in there and give your balloon a squeeze because we need to bring out the shine uh, when these balloons are underinflated, they can look rather dull so you need to stretch out the latex now that eyeball is far too big for our owl so we need to let some air out and i want something that's approximately four fingers or so so i'm going to twist that off and tie and make another one of these Take your two eyeballs and tie them together. Okay, and then you can trim off these necks. Take your owl's head and body, take your eyeballs and just wrap those eyeballs around the head like that. So this is what we've got. Take a mocha brown 160 and I've, I've said so many times before, I like to inflate these with the hand pump. I just find it quicker, I find it easier, it takes an extra second or two to put the 160 onto the tip of the hand pump but I think you get a better um, uh, inflation I think you you get a smoother inflation and less banding than using the pocket pump so this is the way I like to do it okay and then you want to inflate that to a tip of a couple of fingers and then tie that off and take your 160 and just wrap that 
into the flower petal base a couple of times, okay? Rearrange your flowers, petals if you need to, and give that 160 a stretch. So take your 160 and just wrap it into the neck of your owl, bring that back down, you can give it a squeeze, bring that back down, and just wrap that into that flower petal base, okay? Around a couple of times, and then you should have enough left to go up and down one more time. So take that up, wrap it around, and bring it back down on the other side, and just wrap that into the base. And if you've got enough 160 left, go up and down a couple more times just to fill in the back of the owl's body. And then you can break this off and just wrap that end around a few times. And I like to just take a couple of these 160 bubbles and just bring them round to the sides so they're looking like our owl's wings. Okay, so that's what you've got at the moment. Take a 160 yellow and just inflate that a little bit. We're not going to use all of this, so it's by no means critical how much you inflate it. So you want to make a couple of bubbles that are about two fingers in size and then bring those two bubbles together, twist them below the knot and then take that neck and just wrap that through those two pinch twists. And this is my preferred method for pinch twisting two bubbles when they're at the start of a balloon. I just find it's a much more secure method. And then you want to make a bubble of about four fingers or so, followed by another bubble that is a little bit smaller, so three fingers. And then wrap that second bubble into those two pinch twists there. Okay. And then you can break the rest off and tie. Hang on to your bit of scrap, we're going to need that for later. Next, take a black 160 and inflate that part way. Again, we're not going to be using all of this just at the moment, so it's not critical how much you inflate it. So we're going to use this 160 to frame our owl's eyes. And there are a couple of ways you can do this to achieve different looks and effects. So you can go around in quite a, a, a circular kind of way, uh, or you can go out to the sides and um, create more the impression of a, a, a sort of a, a brow with a point here. Uh, and that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so take your black 160 and just wrap that in to the back of that head and wrap it, wrap it in quite well. And with your 160 coming out from between the eyeballs at the bottom, okay? And we want to go up a little way so that we're creating a bubble that's kind of in line with the top of that eyeball. Okay, so that's what perhaps a hand span I would say okay and for the next bit I'm going to have to turn the owl to face me okay but only for a little while okay and then I want to create a, a large bubble so I want this bubble to angle up and then I want to create a large bubble that goes across the top of the owl's eyeballs like a a mono brow for want of a better expression okay and then I want to make another bubble that matches this one okay so again I'm just gonna turn the owl to face me so I can see what I'm doing I can measure a bubble to match best I can twist that off okay and then wrap that into back of the owl's head okay just wrap that in a few times just at the moment don't break this off we just want to position everything because things will 
move around with this model. We can break the rest off, but leave yourself a nice long tail. Okay, let that down. And if you want to, you can wrap that around a few more times just to be on the safe side. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to split this bubble roughly in half. Okay. Then, then bring that little bit of scrap, bring it up over the top of that bubble and bring it in between those two eyeballs and wrap around a few times. If you want to, you can also bring it behind the owl's head. So you'll see that everything's moved up like this, don't worry. We're going to adjust everything, okay? Then take your owl's beak and make sure that the larger of those two bubbles is on the top and take that bit of uninflated uh, scrap that we kept and just pull it through. So position the beak there between the eyeballs and just pull that bit of scrap through and into the back of that head, okay? Wrap around the back of the head a few times. Take a black 260 and just put a little bit of air into there. We don't need a lot of this and tie that off, okay? And give your balloon a squeeze. And we just want to make a couple, four small loops of at most three fingers, okay? So we give your balloon a squeeze and make three more of those. So that's what you've got and then twist off a bubble of a couple of fingers okay you can break the rest off again leave yourself a nice long bit of um scrap a bit of uninflated section okay and just tie that off so this is our owl's mortarboard you now want to find that raisin in your owl's head and I like to position the mortarboard about here towards the front but slightly off to one side so it's always tricky trying to grab hold of the raisin in just the right place let me see whether I'm happy with that I don't think that's too bad so I'm just going to twist that there and then I'm going to take that mortarboard and a bit of scrap and I'm just going to wrap that round directly and then tie that off. So that's what we've got at the moment. So just take that little bit of leftover black 160 that you had, put a little bit of air in there. We don't need very much of this at all and we're just going to use this to wrap around the base of that mortarboard and just trim off that bit of excess there okay so just take your 160 and just wrap it around the base of that mortarboard just bring it together and twist off a bubble and twist those two together and what I like to do here is I just like to take that end and tuck it underneath that loop there and then I can uh, cut off the end, break off the end, whoops, <laughs> something's falling out in the studio, <laughs> uh, and just tie those two ends together. I like to tie this one twice and and just cut off those bits of excess okay and our owl is coming together nicely this is what you've got at the moment so we've just tied there if you wanted to you could put a pinch twist there it's entirely your choice for my owl's eyes i like to take a yellow sharpie and i draw quite a big yellow circle okay and i fill that in 
if you've got a brush tip sharpie or a bullet tip sharpie this color i actually don't know whether they do the bullet tips in in yellow i'd be interested to to know um, but if you've got a bigger um, nib it will obviously take you less time to draw this bit so a nice big yellow circle And then do the same thing on the other eyeball. So whilst that ink is drying, I like to gather a few bits of uh, scrap balloon, 160s in um, red, yellow, gold. I've got a bit of 260 there in orange. And I just like to um, put, position these at the, the brow here. Oops. So just take your owl and just pass one side of those tails through under this side of the owl's eye eyebrows and pass the other side through on the other side and then just pull those forward at that central point so we're kind of creating a, some frilly bits here some, some little coloured coloured feathers Okay, and then when we've done that and we're happy with how they're looking, we can give our owl a little bit of a haircut and uh, just trim those off. Next, take your black Sharpie and draw a big black circle in the middle of that yellow. And for this, I'm using a bullet tip. And then outline that yellow circle in black. And it is a little bit tricky to do with that beak in place. It's easier for you to turn the sculpture upside down, then by all means do that. I'm a big believer in doing whatever makes your life easier. Okay, and if you want, you can just give a couple of little eyelashes here. And then with my orange Sharpie, I just make some little flecks in that yellow. Just go around quickly. And then using an Edding 750 paint pen, just put a couple of white highlights into the eyes, one larger dot one smaller and it was my birthday relatively recently and my sister bought me an entire box of edding 750s so I, I think I've probably got enough for life now so thank you very much Gail she does like to watch the videos and I think she makes a shopping list of all the things I mentioned so thank you very much for the gift of the edding 750s it's wonderful um, and I just use the white paint pen to just put some little white flecks into the um, the yellow part of the eye as well just trying to um, give the impression of a little bit of um, depth to the eye just trying to get that little bit of a brindled effect it's quite funny my brother-in-law has been hoping I will mention him on video so hello John and um, we're very proud of John because he's um, he's a published author so um, he's uh, very knowledgeable and an expert on the English Civil War so he he writes factual historical books and we're very proud of him so hello John uh, so that is my balloon owl my wise balloon graduation owl this design also works well if you use a print balloon here uh, but in the absence of a print balloon, you can do some sort of horse shape, sh um, shape um, designs here, just to sort of give the impression of some feathers. So there he is, your wise graduation owl. Um, I like to use the yellow base because it gives the impression of feet. Um, the other thing you can do, you could actually reduce the number of petals that you have on the base and um, 
uh, then use a bit of 260 or 160 just coming out here and here as though he's sitting on a branch so that works well um, but I really hope you've liked this design I have been asked to create a wise graduation now for you so I hope those of you who've been asking for this design enjoy it I hope it's one that you can use and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you create you're all so creative and I love seeing what you do with these designs you really make them your own you put your own uh, adaptations to them and it's great to see I, I'm often asked whether I mind whether um, you make a change to the design and I actually love it when you do so I'm thrilled that you take a design and you feel it merits the investment of your time and and thought to 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 make it even make it better so um, many heads are better than one so you know, the, the more that we, uh, we work and adapt our designs, I, I think they work better. I'm always changing things. So it designs that I've made a couple of years ago that I look at now and think, oh, I'm not quite happy with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that and adapt it. So these designs never, ever stand still. They're constantly evolving. And I think, I think that's, a, that's a good thing. So you help me do that with your, your ideas as well. So you, you're always giving me ideas of things to to do and how to improve things so please remember to subscribe to the channel i publish new videos every tuesday uh, balloon art tips and tutorials and i'll see you again in the next video